Paul here, and on this channel, we keep you up to date with the latest on the Ronin S, and in mid-November 2019, DJI released app version 1.2.6, as well as firmware version 2.1.1.0. They are packed full of features. We're gonna talk about them in this video, so let's check it out. Before we begin, make sure to update both the app and the firmware so all the features are available. I'll put more information in the description below. The first thing you'll notice when you open up the app is it looks a little bit different than what you're used to. They say it's been optimized and it is a little bit easier to find the things you're looking for. If you open up the create function, you'll notice is a new game controller picture on the bottom. Click on that and you can now use your PS4 or Xbox One S controller to control the gimbal. You can pan, tilt, roll, recenter. You can also change the modes. You can stop and start recording, take pictures, and focus and zoom using the triggers. And if I point it up here, they don't show it, but you can actually use these buttons to fire it. You can go in the app and customize which functions are mapped to the different buttons. You can also customize the speed and smoothing, and I'd suggest knocking those speeds down well below 20 to make it more usable. How does this work? The controller connects to the phone via Bluetooth, and then the phone connects to the Ronin through the app. Now what this is gonna mean is you have to leave the page open in order to actually function and use this. If I leave the page, it stops working, which is really unfortunate. If I go back in, I can use it again. That means I can't use my phone as a monitor or anything else while I'm doing this. It does mean you could potentially extend the range because now you have the range between your Ronin and the phone and the phone and the controller if you're willing to leave your phone or iPad or something in between somewhere to do that. Now a couple notes here as well. Since it's Bluetooth, I do have older Xbox One controllers. They have three segments across the top. These do not work. They cannot connect between the controller to the phone and connect via Bluetooth. So that's not gonna work for you. I had to borrow this controller from my brother's family. Thank you very much. The other note here is that sometimes you can get in a situation where it becomes extremely laggy. I mean, completely unusable, giant delays, seconds delays between hitting buttons and the Ronin moving. What causes this, I haven't pinned down perfectly, but I do think it is a sequencing order of when you boot things up. So what I do, and I think best practice, is to have everything shut down, first connect the controller to the phone, and then boot up the Ronin and the app and connect that together, and it seems to work whenever I do that sequence, but I haven't had enough time on it to prove it out perfectly. Let me know in the comments below if you think this feature is useful or not. If you dive further into the Active Track feature, you might notice something different. You can actually switch the camera mode and change the interval between pictures. Now in the release notes, they talk about hyperlapse and motion lapse and all sorts of stuff, but just ignore that. All it's doing is allowing you to do a time lapse within Active Track. Now why would you want to do this? Well, for a hyperlapse. If you want to take a building that's in the far distance, you want to track that, and as you walk closer, take pictures as you go. You don't have to keep the gimbal pointed as well as you would without that feature, so it's gonna to track to that and help you out there. Don't forget you need this little thingy-mabob at the top in order to use this feature. Another feature they added is you can now double tap the M button for portrait mode for all those TikTok videos and things like that. Hashtag vert, thanks Benjamin Brandon. Other than that, you might wanna note that you cannot do this in a standing up version because it's gonna point right at the ceiling so you do need to have it in flashlight mode to make this useful. Related to that, if you go in the status page, you'll find some new things. You can disable the portrait, auto roll 360, as well as selfie modes, somewhere there before. And you'll also find that in addition to system calibration, there's an advanced calibration, where if your gimbal is a little bit more unbalanced. If you enter that, it takes around 30 seconds. It's gonna move around. You'll hear some sounds like the auto tuning. It seemed to work fine. Haven't had any issues with it. I also saw a note about this, and I got this to pop up once where it says joystick air run auto-tune. So I ran auto-tune and it went away. They didn't go into any details, but they said the auto-tune and smooth track settings have been optimized in the app. As far as compatibility updates, it's now compatible with the Panasonic G95, S1H, as well as the Nikon Z50. They also fixed some issues related to Sony cameras saving zoom settings after gimbal reboots, as well as some focus failures with Canon EOS, EOS, EOS however you say it. I heard from some of you after the last update that you were having some new issues. Please let everyone know and share in the comments below if you're having issues, if this fixed the issues or caused new ones, because it's really annoying when things don't work. <laughs>